Yo, 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 Hello. Welcome to the dojo. Of course, it is Rendroid's dojo, and this is Rendroid's coding hour. That's right. We're going to spend an hour on New Year's Eve coding something very simple. Are you guys ready? Let's check the stream. Oop, audio sounds good there. Let's check a YouTube stream. I know you guys can't see this. Inception live. It's live. Perfect. All right. Here's what we're going to do today on this last day of 2023. Last three hours of 2023. We're in central time. We're going to do... The whole point of this is I've been wanting to install... I wanted to make a simple program. Simple, simple, simple program that runs on the terminal that I can distribute to your a friend or colleague or whatever. And what does that mean? Okay, let's let's start here. Right in front of me, I have a Hello World Python script. Literally got this out of the box from PyCharm, JetBrains' Python ID. And I'm going to run it. And then we'll talk about what it does. So obviously there's some comments in here. They don't use slash slash, whack whack. They use the pound sign. They've got, they define a function. That's what def means. They use underscore all lowercase for the function name, print high. They accept a parameter and then they print, print to the screen, apostrophe high, the name. Is that back tick or apostrophe? Probably back tick, right? That'd make more sense. A new keyboard here. Let's see if I can find my back tick. Nope, where's my back tick? This is why I need my key map. I'm working on my new key layout. You might update. Not right now. Sorry. Oh, I should have updated. It's okay. We're using our fallback keyboard. All right. Back tick. Mm, I don't know. What does that look like to you? Back tick. Yeah, not a back tick. All right. This is an interpreted string. That's what that means. That's all I was trying to say. And then there's an if name equals main print i pie charm. This is a, this is the main script. This is how you run it. That's cool. What if I want to run this from the command line? So right now, you got to have JetBrains, PyCharm. Got to have all this code. You got to have a Python environment. That's what this virtual environment is. We got 3.9 set up in a virtual environment. And then you got to be able to hit this little button, right? Or uh, as it says in the comment here, you know, control R, which for anyone familiar with this ID, it's really just running this run configuration here. And every time I run it, it's saying, hi, PyCharm. But I want to pass in my own name, right? And I want I want this to be run from the terminal. So I'm going to open a terminal window. I'll just do it here in the IDE, but really I could do this at you know, the Mac level. And I want to run my script, but where is it? Lessons flow. So we got a main.py, P-Y, Python. How do I execute that? Can I just call main.py? No, no permission. Probably have to like gmod it or something, right? gmod plus x main.py, and then main.py. Syntax error. It's not happy. Okay, let's use, so... Part of the stream, all these streams, is uh, using AI to help, right? It's a new world. I've got uh, JetBrains' AI assistant now. I actually like it so far. It doesn't just give you the chat like you see here, but uh, it can also give you feedback on your code. So I'm going to start by clearing out some of these comments because I think they're just adding noise. All right, and let's see what we can do with this AI. So obviously in the chat here, we can notice uh, this user prompts. I can save different prompts. That's pretty much it for the chat window but I could right click a line, AI actions, I can explain the code, suggest refactoring, find problems, or copy this into a new chat window, write some documentation, generate some unit tests, generate code, convert file to another language, add your problems. So very cool. Let's use this to, um, first let's just say explain code. Let's see what it says. It says the provided Python code is quite straightforward and includes basic concepts such as function, definition of Python's if name equals main class. Let's break it down line by line. Def print high name. This line defines a function name print high that accepts one argument name. Print f high name. This line is inside the function definition and is the function's sole action. It prevents it prints the string high followed by the value of the name argument. Note that this index f apostrophe or single quote that that's that single quote is used for string formatting, allowing us to include variable values within strings. String interpolate. If name equals main, this line checks if the Python script is being run directly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm running it directly. When a Python file is run directly, the special variable name is set to main. However, when a Python file is imported as a module, the name variable is set to the name of that file without the py extension. This check allows certain code to only run when the script is being executed directly, not within it's imported, not when it's imported as a module. Okay, cool. Great. How can I call this from the command line? Let's see what it says. To run the Python script from the command line, you need to use the Python command followed by the path to the script. Oh, 
I didn't say Python, guys. Noob. Don't usually work in Python. Total oversight though. So it's Python space current directory. Excuse the keyboard. Main.py. Oh my gosh. So simple, right? Hi PyCharm. Now what if I want to pass in an argument? Let's try putting a space for Android. No, didn't work. Let's try treating it like that it's gonna work. What if we said main maybe because I'm running indirectly, I can't do that. You can't. How Okay, so let's just make sure I did what it said. CD path. Da, da, da. Once you're there, Python. Yep. Command line. Uh -huh, da, da, da. This assumes that your Python is installed and configured, which it is. Especially as soon as the Python script file has the necessary permissions to be executed. Well, yeah, I already did that. All right. Okay. How do I pass in my own argument? Bum, 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 bum. All right. So we got to change the code to do that. To pass in your own argument to the Python script from the command line, you will need to use the sys module in Python. This module provides access to some variables used or maintained by the Python interpreter and two functions that interact strongly with the interpreter. It has a list called argv, which holds the command line arguments of the script. First, modify your script to accept command line arguments. So they're importing sys, and now they're using the sys argv1. It's not zero based, which is sad. Here, sys argv1 is used to get the first argument passed from the command line. Note that sys argv0 is always the name of the script itself. Oh, that's cool makes sense then. Then you can command line run your script and pass an argument. Very cool. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to try, actually, you know what? I wonder if I can have AI do that for me. Let's say, let's put a comment and say, uh, ba -ba -ba, parse arg1. Okay. Didn't want to do it. What if I say write code, find problem, new chat, write documentation, generate, generate code, parse arg1 and print and pass into print function. There we go parse. Probably didn't need to set it as a variable, but it did it. Cool. Oh, except all. Let's, so you look at it side by side, choose what you want. Pretty cool. Very cool. Specify, ask AI to improve the results in line arg1. Okay, pretty good. Specify, don't print pycharm. What? Print hi name, print hi name. If not equal to pycharm, print f hi name. Undo. I'll read it. It says this argv1 is not equal to pycharm print hi. This argv1. No. No, 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 no. Only print argv1. Only print pycharm if argv, argv1 is not set is undefined. Print hi pycharm name equals pycharm if length. <laughs> this is ugly. Oh, is this a diff? Am I just reading it wrong? Oh, I was just reading it wrong. It's, it was gray <laughs> this whole time. It's funny. I'm going to accept all this, but I think it's written really ugly. Well, now it's even saying it doesn't like its own code. Let's see. Expected two blank lines. Fine. We can reformat that. That's no problem. Why do you need two blank lines after the imports? That's weird. Excuse me. That's so funny. Okay. This code sucks. I don't like this at all. Here's another way to write it. Say arg. I'll say a name. I guess it already did do that. If length equals one, if length is less than two. God, there's gotta be a better way to write that. Python's weird. Suggest refactoring. Let's see if it comes up with a better way. I've introduced a main function. The logic to parse command line arguments has been moved to a parse arguments function. Function parse arguments has a return type string hint for better fun better understandability. Is that right? That's cool. Very nice. Function parse arguments has a return type string. Hence, code becomes cleaner and even more readable. Now each function has its own responsibility. Main function acts as an entry point. Parse arguments, process input arguments, and print i just prints a message. Cool. And then you can actually tell it to use this code, I believe. See diff and apply. Pretty cool. All right. Mainly just messing around with AI at this point. But yeah. Cool. Let's run that. Oh, not dash h. Hi dash h. All right. Cool. Hi pi charm. Hi Android. Cool. Whatever. What was the point of this? So now I have a script I can give to you. You will have to make it executable like I did earlier, but whatever, that's doable. But imagine I send everyone a Slack message and go, hey, here's a file, .py file. Download this, make sure you have Python installed, gmod it, and then execute this command. It's not right. It's not, it's, it's not the best way to distribute code. I, was, I get up, make a GitHub repository and say, here's a GitHub, a GitHub repository and a readme that tells you how to download and basically do all the same thing. There's one more way, and there's many more ways, but there's a, a something I want to do, which is I want to use a brew tap. What is a brew tap? So command line programs are often installed through brew. If I say brew here, it's going to try to do something. It tells me what commands there are. 
second. Brew bottle, brew bump, brew, brew, uh, uninstall something, brew install something, right? Let me, let me ask AI something. What are some popular brew packages? So brew is a package manager. Oh, that's really interesting. So this AI assistant refuses to answer that question. That's really weird. Let's see, is CodeGPT still enabled? It's fine answering it. That's just using OpenAI. ChatGPT behind the hood, really. Probably with its own prompt. Yeah, development tools, Git, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, Java, databases, MySQL. Are those really brew packages, though? I mean, yes, you can install anything through brew, but I was thinking, like, utils. Some cool, fun utils. Utilities, here we go. Debugget, curl, tmux, htop, tree, jq. Okay, command line directory tree generator. What is that? What is tree? Tree is command line utility that displays the directory structure in a tree-like format. It provides a visual, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's do it. So if I say tree, this path, or tree, my, I don't know, maybe not my whole home directory, might be a bit much. Maybe, let's see, cd, there we go. cd, unreal engine. Ooh, that'd be fun. No, that's all it's got inside. Be cool if I'd add more. Okay, actually, we can go to CD. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Projects. Probably not projects. CD projects. And yeah, Xamarin. That's fine. We could do Xamarin. All right, there we go. Bunch of stuff. So if I do tree and then I give it the current directory, it doesn't know what that is, right? So brew, say brew install tree. And now tree must be in what they call like the core package. Great. Now I should have tree. I don't know if I gotta reset the terminal or not, but let's just try it as is. Hey, it worked. So okay. Tree does print the current directory in the tree versus if I just ls the folder, right? Obviously tree gives you what's in the folders in the subfolder right there's obviously a lot of subfolders here goes off the screen but the point is somebody made that util and i could easily install with brew now the only way that works is if brew accepted a pull request from the makers of tree to put it put like the binaries in in what's called brew core or something like that or easily installable through brew core i'm not gonna do that today i could do that but the first step is to create what's called a tap what are some pop popular taps so think of it is you're brewing alcohol brewing beer brewing whatever and you need to tap into someone else's repository basically so brew home, uh, homebrew core the default tap that contains the core formula and packages maintained by the homebrew team so there's something called a formula that tells you how to install tree in this case tree formula and all its dependencies right and so um, core has a bunch of formulas including tree Homebrew Cask, a tap for installing macOS applications and GUI-based software using Homebrew. So I've used this to install Docker, for example. If you want an actual application in your applications folder or you want an icon for it, you don't just want the CLI, you would use Brew Cask, and that would be just like going to their website or the app store and downloading the app. And it would show up like a normal app, not just a command line util. Homebrew versions, a tap that provides older versions of software. Homebrew service, a tap that allows managing background services. Homebrew science, a tap for scientific software. Homebrew PHP, homebrew games, a tap for installing games and game related software. Homebrew fonts. These are just a few examples of popular tabs available at Homebrew. Taps can also be found using the brew tap command, allowing users to access and install formula from those tabs. Brew search. You can explore more tabs on Homebrew website or by searching for specific tabs using brew search. So I don't actually think brew tap is going to tell me what I want. It did not. Okay. But this takes me to GitHub. So let me open up GitHub and show you what I'm talking about. Oh, looks like a couple of viewers. Hey guys, what's up? Oh wait, it's just me. <laughs> it's my two windows. All right, I need to sign in. You guys can't see this, but I am in GitHub now. Okay, so in GitHub, we can search for brew, slash, or I guess homebrew, what's the full name? Homebrew, brew our stuff at home, slash. Now, anyone can create a tap that you can brew install from. You just have to say like brew tap into whatever it's you know, the tap I want is, and then you can install from there. So I'll show you. It's easier shown than said. But you, they recommend that you use homebrew as a prefix, homebrew slash. So if I just search for homebrew slash, I should be seeing some examples of just randomly created scripts from people on the internet. Funny enough, it's not actually searching very well. Um, homebrew, homebrew test bot. Homebrew tap. Let's see what this is. Homebrew formula that allows installation of AWS tools through Homebrew Package Manager. 
Brew tap, AWS tap, homebrew dash tap. Okay, for some reason it's not homebrew. It's homebrew dash, I had it wrong, it's not slash. Okay, so this is from Amazon, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and they're showing you how you could install their command line tools. I wonder if tap means one of these. It'd be weird that you have to specify tap. Okay, so now that I know I was searching wrong, let's search for homebrew dash this time. Homebrew core shows up again. Brew bundle, homebrewery. Skyline, emu, switch brew, homebrew. Should was a repository of cool homebrew taps. Let's Google that. Cool homebrew taps. Unsupported interesting taps. Awesome homebrew taps. Thank you. Awesome brew taps, contents, brew taps, cast taps, external commands, contribute. It's like a brew taps. Install a power level 9K Z shell theme with homebrew. A tap that provides a formula to download album artwork via Apple, Apple Music and Jinx. Community Engine X tap for custom modules. The official MongoDB brew. FFM, FFmpeg. I've used that for streaming. Uh, what do you call it? Compressing streams and stuff. Python itself can be installed via a tap. OSS. Yeah, these are like really huge brew. I was looking for like a simple util. Let's see. Uh, Python CLI CLI utils brew taps. Come brew tap for Jerry Shaw's productions and collections. Use the following commands. Add this tap to your local homebrew installation. I guess you do need the word tap. I don't know why. People are including the homebrew dash tap in their names. That doesn't seem right. But yeah, this guy has a bunch of little utils. Cool. All right. Anyways, enough of that. What I wanted to do was create my own. And so I think I already started it. Yeah, homebrew dash Android, right? So this could be all the tools that you use for, that I use like on my setups, for example. I found this clone, I found this project that I could fork that sets up a basic tap for you. Why not just use Brew, Brew directly? This creates a more focused interface for end users to set up their devices. And cause, yeah, this might be a bit much. This is supposed to install like a bunch of different software for you, like it's for specifically for setting up computers. I might take a step back and not do this actually. Um, Oh yeah, it's called home, oh, Fork from Homebrew Dev Setup, right? Let's do a test instead of this guy. Let's actually follow this guide. There's a guide here for create brew tap for Python. And we will write a cool Python script at the end of this, if not today, in the next stream or one of the future streams. How to create and maintain the taps. This is the homebrew documentation for it, but there's, there's some better guides out there I was reading about. There we go, this guy, I think this is what I was, watch it. yeah 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 this guy so he created this is a bit old probably but he created something called data set let's see what it does it's an open source multi-tool for exploring and publishing data data set is a tool for exploring and publishing data it helps people take data of any shape or size and publish that as an interactive explorable website and accompanying api data set is aimed at data journalists museum curators or local government scientists researchers and anyone else who has data that they wish to share with the world explore a demo cool Let's do that. Global power plants. Country equals Brazil. Zero records equals China. Well, that's just a lie. We're gonna remove this filter. Ooh, they even have a little map. Is that right? Is it just three? Oh no, okay, you gotta zoom in. What country is this? Interesting. Cool. Anyways, yeah, so this guy wrote a cool wrote a cool guide about how to how he created his own tab for this tool here. Interesting. So you would just install it by saying brew, install, and then his repository on GitHub. Simon W data set slash data set. Wait a bit. Data set dash version. Okay. Here's my code that makes this work. So if you look at the homebrew dash data set, you can see it has a formula folder and just in the readme. To install data set using homebrew, brew tap, Simon da, 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 brew install, Simon. Da, da, da. You can configure uh, what the install worked using data set version, data set version, data set version. Okay. So this is much simpler. I could fork this. But if I read his guide, he actually talks about how he created these files. These are Ruby files using a util. Because if you notice, this has to declare all of your dependencies as resources and where to get them. I don't have any dependencies other than Python itself. So I don't know if Python is mentioned here. I feel like it would be. Yeah, Python virtual environment. So I'm going to have to set up a py Python a virtual environment. This guy has Python 3.9 which is probably what I want. I could probably just fork this and then just get rid of all these resources because I don't need a AIO files or ASGI. Yes, I only need Python environment and maybe sys, Python system. If I, you know, for the hello world, I'm going to need an open AI library for what I'm actually trying to build. But for now, that's all I need. So let's follow the guide a bit further. All right, creating a tap. Homebrew taps are 
I mean, we should, we should, I want to make this, hit this point home a little, or actually, you know what? I can't. So I was going to say the whole reason you need a tap is because if your program is not in the core libraries of brew, then you can't just say brew install data set. But if you read further, I read this earlier, the guy actually got his into Python core. So taps are just naming conventions. Creating a tap is as simple as creating a GitHub repository with homebrew prefix. The repo and this gets tapped when someone runs brew tabs on a data set. The repository needs a formula folder that contains a formula, blah, 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 creating a formula, submitting the test block, iterating and submitting homebrew core. This part. If your package gets accepted into homebrew core, you should be able to install it just by running brew install package name, right? So he actually goes on to say he did this. Homebrew maintained bottle versions of those poor packages. They are pre-compiled bundles of assets, separate tar for each recent macOS operating system, which install much faster than a regular Homebrew, which has to compile everything. Homebrew contributing document tells you how to do this. I guess he doesn't say it, but he actually did this. So, but yeah, that's the point is I want to build, it'd be cool if I could just say brew install Android, whatever, but I can't. Instead, I have to say brew install Android slash whatever my, my uh, repository is called, my tools called android dev tools whatever but yeah let's let's do our hello world first so creating a tap homebrew taps we already talked about that repository needs a formula folder which is which are ruby files okay formulas are ruby files the first working version of data set formula can be seen here okay shape of the formula is this include language python virtual environment description home page url the actual tar file a version a sha and what it depends on and the resources it depends on i guess yeah there's more resources but he just called out one and then he has an install virtual environment install with resources so that's the git installs python a python script and then a test system bin data set dash dash help now a dash dash help is not recommended if you read the brew guy tap guide they say that's you need tests and most people do a help but that is not ideal but it is better than no tests at all because <laughs> it at least tells you that it's been installed every dependency needs to be listed as a resource they all need to be available in standard distribution packages sdist packages i made sure all my devices had an sdist on pypy so pypy is some kind of python distribution package distribution PyPy, the Python package index. Cool, going in the weeds here on Python. It must be installed on a fresh virtual environment. So you saw earlier, I already have a virtual environment. I'll show you how to create one of those. We'll create one. If you install it in an environment that with other packages, those packages must be included in the formula, even if they're not used by that tool. Create a fresh virtual environment like this. CD temp, make fresh. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll call it something else though. Where should I? Uh, CD, we could do it here. Make der. What do we want to call this? I just need to call it something else. I guess for now we'll call it Randroid. I don't want to use two words. Randroid dev. Okay. And then uh, we'll cd into it. And then we'll say python dash m vnv vnv. Okay. Source and then activate to actually go into that environment. See, I mean, um. All right, so here's where he actually said he has another one called strip tax and he wants to show you how to install it unlike data set which is in it's already packaged in homebrew oh strip tags is not packaged in homebrew i'm sorry installing both strip tags and homebrew pi pi poet package pip install strip tags homebrew pi pi poet next run poet dash f to create the formula poet dash f strip tags strip tags rb so strip tags must be an app of his, right? And this is not in a brew tap, you know? So it's just a Python script. He's got tests. He's got a main P PI. He's got a CLI PI. Cool. Init from that lib import strip tags, all the strip tags. I might use something like this to create a CLI. Yeah, so main just creates the CLI. That's cool. Lib. Then he has a library. Cool. Very simple util and he's even got tests let's see what those do oh the test yaml test strip cli cli runner isolated file system copied avoid modifying for later tests args args key args if you ci option create temp file when open input so this is just like test setup lib test not uta encoding very unreadable tests. Let's see. Test YAML. Input. Hello world. Box. Expected hello world. Okay. So 
At least we can see his test inputs and outputs, but how he actually set up his tests is very confusing. So it strips tags out of strings like this. So these are HTML tags, like a paragraph tag. Hello world. Interesting, sometimes he passes an arg, like this one, p, and sometimes he doesn't. Why? So when he says no args, hello worlds, bold worlds, no args, you expect hello worlds. But when you have a p parameter, you still expect hello world. Be just world. I see. He's saying, give me everything inside of P. And so this is a nested tag. He had a P and a B, a bold and a paragraph. And so it returns everything inside a paragraph, which is both words. If you just want the stuff in bold, it just gives you world. Pretty cool. Okay, so if we want to write a Python test, this might be a decent example. All right, let's go back to his guide. So he's saying, install his app using Python. So he's already got this in pip somehow. And also install homebrew pypypoet. Now, what is homebrew by pipe about? That's something to help you create homebrew taps, I believe. So let's look at it. By by poet invoked like poet foo for some package foo, which is presently installed in syspath. Determines which packages foo and his dependents depend on. Downloads them from PyPy and computes their checksums and spits out homebrew resource stanzas. Poet-foo will give you a complete homebrew formula. Poet-foo will write a resource stanza for a single... Oh, so this only works if it's something that's installed on syspath and then it downloads them from PyPy. So it downloads the dependence on PyPy. Numbers packages foo and it's barely dependent. How do you get installed on syspath? Let's look that up. How to install a Python script on syspath. Let's see. Determine the location of the Python script that you want to install. Let's assume the script is located path to script. Open a terminal command prompt and navigate to the directory where script is located. Run the following command to install the script on syspath. Python dash m site. What is site? This command will display the user specific site path where your script, where you can place your script. Copy or move the script file script up py to the user specific site packages directory obtained from the previous step. For example, if the user specific site packages directory is users, you can copy the script using the following command. Okay, so now that I'm in my virtual environment, this is a different virtual environment, but then this is the new one. I should be able to run this command. Python dash m site user dash site. And now this, that's not really my virtual environment though. Hmm, he said, I don't think it is. Copy and remove the script file script.py to the user specific site pack directory to term obtained from the previous step. For example, if the user specific site file directory, oh, you can copy the values in the CP. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and do that. So our main is here. I want to do CP main py. And I want to paste it here. Cool. Once the script is copied to the site package directory, you can import and use it in your Python programs by simply importing it as a module. For example, if the script is named script.py, you can import it in another Python script like this. Import script. Ooh, I probably should have named it main.py. By installing the script in sys.path, you make it accessible to other Python scripts without needing to specify the full path each time. Note that the specific location of the user-specific site package just directly may vary depending on... All right, so we have one problem here. I need to give this a unique name. So we can keep a keep a main. Let's do... Let's take a book out of... Or a page out of this guy's book here. This one. All right, so I don't know about this init from lib import strip tags. All strip tags. Okay. We don't need that. So yeah, seal a very generic name, but from strip tags, import strip tags. Where is he getting this? I guess this is a module. Was that right? Hmm. Import strip tags. Lib. Import re from typing import iterable optional. Hmm. From strip tags. Maybe that's what this is. All equals strip tags. No. Strip tags, import strip tags. It's like a snake in its own tail. Where do strip tags get defined? That's the part I don't understand. How can I give my Python script a unique name instead of just me? Okay, so hold on a second. If I remove, if I rename this, call it rendroid.py, can I call Python Android? Yes. Okay. Let's copy this instead, and then let's remove. I want to make sure. Let's see. Oh, that's less main. Yeah. 
arm to sheriff may not be one. Plus we're Android. Well, S. Android. Okay, cool. All right, let's go back to where we were before. Okay, so now that our script is here. All right, cool. So he's saying install it. So he basically installed it. But he also wants us to install Homebrew Pie Poet. We can go ahead and do that. Let's go back into this environment here. Brew install. Or no, it's pip install, right? Pip install or pip something. Pip, yeah, pip install. So this should install in the virtual environment. Cool. All right. So next, run poet f to create the formula. Poet f strip text. So we need to run poet f randroid. Randroid.rb. We'll see if they can do that. Okay. Package not installed. Warning. Randroid is not installed, so we can't compute resources for its dependencies. Warnings don't warn. It's not installed, so we can't compute. All right. So it doesn't consider that installed. Or potentially it needs to be like source. No. Hmm. Yeah, I can't pip install Randroid. Seems like there's an error with the package for Android. Your Python environment isn't able to locate it. One standard solution might be to install the missing package using pip. You can do this by running the following command in your terminal. Remember to check that this command is being run inside correct virtual environment, especially if you're in multiple environments. So how, how do I make my Python script installable with pip? You have to organize your project in a sensible structure. Most Python packages include a directory that contains the Python modules as well as several administrative files. For example, a typical directory structure might be project package directory and it Pi, pi. Yeah, okay, so basically what this guy did earlier. Create a setup.py file. This is a build script for setup tools that provide setup tools with details about your package. Here's a simple, hello, common man. Sorry, I just saw your message. Thanks for hopping in. Find packages, setup. Okay, so yeah, we need to set all this up. Read me, license, create an API file inside your package directory. This can be empty must be present in the directory after you've done this you can you can package your project and distribute it as source distribution python setup pi dist this will create a tar gz file in newly created disk directory this tar gz file is what you would upload to pi pi should you choose to distribute your package to users would then be able to install your package with pip by refactoring it in PyPy. Remember also to check the PyPy terms of service for test your package distribution. Additional option to use the Twine to upload your package version to PyPy. First install it via pip install Twine, then run Twine up for a private project or literally use supplying the tar GZ file or directly install the project that pip installed that might be sufficient. Do note this only simplified version of making it. Yeah, so here's the deal. If you want to be on homebrew if you want to homebrew probably homebrew core you could there's no nothing preventing you from being on a homebrew tap i guess but if you read the homebrew core docs they tell you they don't typically want you to be on pip and homebrew so like you're not going to put yourself on pi pi and on homebrew probably why this example has this guy has one of each so i actually think this is the key i think we can install the current directory but first we have to you know set up s dist so I'm curious if I can do that just like this. I'm not set up dot pi. I don't have a setup dot pi. I'm I'm trying to get around having to add all the extra stuff for just like a hello world. Oh yeah, that's not gonna work. All right, so we do need a setup. Yeah, so I'm probably not gonna go down this road then. But yeah, we could do like a. Well, I guess he doesn't have a setup. All right, we can look into creating. A, oh, he does. Yeah. So we could do this, but we're basically doing the same thing as what we're trying to do with brew tap. So this is like an alternative. We could have done it this way, but I want to do a brew command. So this was all just a you know shortcut creating an RB file. But here's the deal. We don't need that. We actually have a very simple file, I bet. So here's an example of a complicated one with a bunch of resources. We don't need all of this. So we just need the very basics. So let's go ahead and create our own. In fact, let me copy this one instead. Cool. Every dependency needs to be listed as a reserve. Okay, cool. What is the name of this file? I guess we could look in his repo. So in his repo, you have a folder called formula dataset.rb. So let's do that. The world directory formula dataset.rb. So this will be new file. We'll call it randroid.rb. Okay. First thing we're going to do is get rid of all of his resources. We may need one. Let's save one for now. We'll say it depends on Python 3.9 because that's what I've got installed. We're going to obviously update the names. Be Android. Need include language Python. 
an open source multi-tool. This is actually just going to be a test util. Not really. A just, just testing out the homebrew tap creation process. All right. And then we can just redirect people to my website because why not? And this is supposed to be the URL to the package, which it's not hosted. So don't know if you need that. This will be version one. I don't have a SHA because it's not there's no actual package. I wonder if this stuff is all optional. Let me try removing it. All right, I'm even gonna try removing this. Oops. How do you do a comment in Ruby? Begin. What is begin? That's such an ugly. Is that true? If I say right click, I suggest refactor new chat using selection. Generate new chat. Generate code. Convert. Generate code. Comment out. And not the whole thing. It's literally just comments. How do I say cancel? It's fine. I can get another copy later if I need it. All right. Now that we got the formula, what was the next step? You can test installing the formula like this. Homebrew, no install from API. No. Brew install, build from source, verbose, debug, strip tags, RB. Problem is, I don't think our thing is installable. So this might still fail. Oops. Wrong wrong environment. Oh, maybe it's fine. Hey, okay. it's doing something. Enumerating objects, counting objects, pressing objects, receiving objects. What the heck did I include? Is there still a dependency in here somewhere? So it's these guys probably. Like this isn't actually, oh my God. System bin data set. Well, we don't have that. We don't have a dash help either. Let's see. How did he create a dash help? Dash dash help. Test coverage, you know, main, CLI, help. Remove content in these, select us. Okay, so I don't actually know what this is. Click option. What's a click option? Click command. Mm. Damn. It's really installing the virtual environment. It's huge. Okay, so if this works, you'll be able to run strip tags. Which strip tags to check? Oh, which strip tags? Now add strip tags. So let me, before that finishes, can I say which Android? Android not found. So let's see if this actually works then. Okay, failed. No available formula with the name rendery.rb. Got it. Where was it looking? Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong folder. Formula requires at least a URL. Okay, so I do need the URL. Hmm. So I don't get this. In order to make something hostable in Homebrew, I have to first make it Python package in like PyPy. Oh, hey, comment. I want to create my own pixel game. I know pixel art, but I don't know how to animate and create a pixel game. Please guide me. What software and coding I want to learn. Comment, I would recommend you go and check out a open source scheme engine. I think it's mostly 2D called Godot. I think I don't know how to spell it. Godot. Godot. God, this is totally wrong. Gato. Oh my God. Help me out Google. Gato. 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 What is wrong with me? Gato. There we go. Gosh, my brain. Check out Godot. G-O-D-O-T. It's open source game development. It's replacing Unity for a lot of people because it's free, but uh, it also kind of gives me Game Maker vibes, which was good back in the day. I built some games with Game Maker. But yeah, check this game engine out. Follow their tutorials. They'll walk you through the entire process. You can you can download assets. And there's, a, there's a growing community of game developers using this engine. And uh, yeah, best of luck. Check it out. Let's see how to create and maintain it. Uh, create brew tab for Python scripts. Creating and running your own homebrew tab. Ew, bad fonts, dude. Bad color scheme. Creating a tab, adding a brand new package to a tab, adding modified version of package. The easiest way to add a package is to start with an application that is not part of the core and is available as a zip or tarball and then custom tab that. Yeah, I don't have a zip. I guess I can try to make one. I wonder if, I lost the article now. I wonder if he was going to dive more into other one that is on GitHub. Brew create CMake. Generate formula in your newly created tab. Brew tap new. What? Specify the type of build needed. CMake. Other templates are available. Chris logo. Menzen Python. Chat is where to tell Brew that URL is a repo, not a file. And your formula. Once this last command has been entered, you will be entering your selected editor. License head install. Okay. Maybe this would work. Why don't we try it? Let's create a new Git project. All right. Let's create repo. Oh man, I don't normally create them this way. Uh, create is not switch. Git branch commit merge rebase reset switch fetch pull push sec diff log show and the file goes get clone get init initialize empty get to repository. Cool. Probably want to only and we do want to get ignore some stuff. Let's add that. Hello world IML. 
No, I think we want that. Miss modules. This guy. Add these to get. Uh -huh. Initial commit, and there's nowhere to push it to. Okay, we'll just commit. All right, so let's try this. Uh, this is for Android. Homebrew dash Android dev. Hopefully that doesn't confuse it. Tap news developer commands. So Homebrew's developer mode has been automatically turned on. Initialize empty kit repository. Create. When a pull request making changes to a formula formula becomes green, all check pass, then you publish the build bottles. Okay, brew create dash dash. So we want to do the, but we want Python. Okay. And then script landroid. I think it's Android 88. Let's see, this is probably not right. But name Android dev. Android dev. Want, yes, want version. Map Android 88. Homebrew Android dev. No available tap. Android 88. Android dev. Run brew tap new. Android 88. Android dev. Brew. New 88. Okay. When a pull request making changes to pass a nil into T must. Please report this issue. <laughs> what the heck is T must? Um, I don't know if it's supposed to exist in GitHub already or not. That's what I'm not sure about. Let's see. This was another type of build needed as you make other build. Blah, 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 blah. The URL of my Git repository. This is his actual Git repository. Okay, so let me see. Did this Android. It's like this one, but I don't want to use this one. Here we go. Homebrew dash git. We can try this one. I'm I'm curious if it only works with existing ones. So we can definitely try this. Though it would be just homebrew Android for now. Set name Android. Oops, no available tab. Right. Okay. Third time's the charm. Still T must. Hello world. Brew great by homebrew friend. Yep, yeah, that's there. It's definitely there. Troubleshooting. Let's update Python resources. Same they're old. Hmm. Brew.rp main. With set name, I get the formula's name and then its version. See, I don't have the formula's name yet. Finally, with tap, I gave it a repository. The user and repo name will have to match on GitHub, GitLab, etc. User and repo name will have to match. Is that right? So notice his repo. What was he talking about? If this is a username, yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Editing your formula. Once this last command has been entered, you will be entering your selected editor. For me, it's Vim. All right. Well, let's look into tabs and external resource formula. Much easier. I want to look into guy. Okay, get a little more information on how this is supposed to work. Visual cards. How Python is handled in Homebrew for the user. Homebrew should work with C Python and default to some Python. How to make Python install Python. All right. Create new script for Homebrew. Python. Simple Homebrew formula for Python. Thank you. Please. I have simple Python app that I want to distribute via private homebrew tab. I have the following file in the main repo, tab main script, and the following config, tabs that we can have, GitHub. Okay, so this needs to have the GitHub repo. Nice. Def install bin install. When I install the main VI file, it's not available. How do I distribute? Can I read it? The buffer one doesn't mention the Python file, so it's not installed. You could try it like this. Something like, so you install test usage, main pi, bin dot install sim link. Mm. Well, that's the another shoot yeah i guess because it's not executable dang man I, I thought using python would make things simpler but now i'm wondering hmm. let's see if ai can help us create a fully functional how to guide that walks me through creating a very simple python hello world script and getting it published as a homebrew tap it's not the right words, but it might do it. Create, it. create your Python script. Creating a home performer for a defined sign application should be installed. There should be your Python script via homebrew. You'll need to create a formula for it. Here's a basic formula structure that we can use. Hello world, home page, GitHub, username, repo, URL. Where does tar come from? Def, install, hello world, to do, system. In hello world. Replace username repo with your GitHub username and repo name where you'll publish your Python script. Replace a SHA there's a file with a SHA 256 as a tar file of your repo's release. Okay. Save this as a hello world.rb inside a directory called formula in your project root directory. Setting up your GitHub repository. Next, push your files to your GitHub repo. It should have the following structure my repo formula hello world.rb, hello world.py. Making a release in your GitHub repo. Click releases, draft and release, put a tag version, 
Create your release. Get up automatically automatic and generate tar GC. Okay, nice. Tar GC. File will be available. Da, da, da. Write in your formula. Replace your other URL and show two fifty six fields in your formula with the URL. Then commit the file. Test your formula. Make sure your formula works as expected. Use brute install build from source. Get up your URL formula formula. Da, da, da. And all steps have been followed correctly. We're publishing your tab. Now we're finally ready to publish your tab. First create a new tab, brew tab new, then see to the generated directory the formula template. Here hello. Finally push the changes. Get add commit. Place the formula template.rb with our hello.rb. Your tab will now be available for all homebrew users. They can install your script with brew install. This is freaking awesome. This is exactly what I wanted. Man, AI, so sweet. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna create a new project. We're gonna call this Hello Android. Okay, call it Hello Android using Python 3.9. New window, attach, what does attach do? I'm gonna keep this, just this up here floating around. Okay. All right, we're gonna change this to literally just print hello Android. No variables or no arguments, nothing. Okay, print hello Android. Great. I create a Python script and we'll create a very simple script that prints hello world, uh, hello underscore world py. Sure, we're gonna do that. Refactor. So we're gonna call it hello. Okay, done. Starting from basics, guys. Homebrew formula is a script that defines how an app should be installed. Okay, here's a basic formula structure that we can use. Okay. Replace user repo with your GitHub username. Let's say this is hello world.rb inside a directory called formula. Okay, new directory formula. Okay, new file. This one's uh, called what? Hello Android. Oh, I keep adding them. Android. Great. This, and we change this to hello Android. And we change this to my Python hello world script. Fine. So we'll say Android's Python hello world script. Then this is rendered 88, Android 88, and the repo we're gonna call it new Android 88. Homebrew, yeah, hello, one word. We'll change this later, just this for now. Actually, this will probably be the right name anyway, so I just need this later. Okay, hello, Android. Hmm, this doesn't have any underscores. How's this gonna work? Hello, Android. I always had a W there. It's like I'm ready to type bin hello world system bin hello hello Android. I always do that. It's so great. All right, setting up the GitHub repository. My repo formula. I'll make a release. Okay, so we want to make this an actual GitHub login. Ooh, gh auth login GitHub. Already logged in to GitHub. Do you want to reauthenticate? Yes. Sh. No, I don't want to reauthenticate. I'll take that back. Set up get set up git with GitHub CLI. Set up login log out. Refresh, set up state status, find issues, nothing here. Uh, how do I create a new, let's see. All right, uh, create a new GitHub repo in, in the command line and push current directory. Initialize, okay. Create a new GitHub repository. You need to manually create a new repository on GitHub before you can push your code to make sure to keep the new repository empty, meaning do not initialize your. Okay, I guess I, that's how I normally do it, but I thought maybe there was a way to do it from the command line. Guess not. Okay, we're gonna say new repositories, new no template, we're Android. Hello, Android. Okay, right? That's the name? Oh no, it's homebrew dash hello. Android. How to read me? No. Get ignore? No. Choose a license? No. Public, sure, great. Initialize Git in your local directory. Creating the new repo on the GitHub, you'll need to initialize your local directory as a Git repository and add your files to Git init. Git add. Actually, let's make sure I added the right things. We don't want these. Git ignore, git ignore, git ignore, git ignore this, git ignore, git ignore. AWCS, great stuff. Pull back branches. It's weird. I thought you can. I guess I have to open the file and then I can get ignored. It's, it's annoying. No, I can't. Are you serious? Oh, I want to ignore everything in not ID. Okay, boom. Deal with it. Now what? You're ignored. Hello. Refresh. Pull back. Run version. Okay. These guys. Get it in it. Command creates the local gear. The commit your change. Yep. Command initial. Commit. Why is it getting ignored? Not there. Link your local repository to your GitHub repository. Yep, git remote add or https hub.com slash rendroid88 slash rendroid. 
Remember, dash, hello, Android. Hello, Android. Right? Push. Push. Dash, you. Origin. Mate. Origin. Mate. What's your name? What? To work. What is that? my password. And I push. Control C. Get. Log and pick it up. Okay. Push. Hello. Great. Got the formula. Cool. Back to the tutorial. Making a release. GitHub. Click releases. Release down here. Create a new release. Choose a tag. Put a tag. Release title, initial release, set as pre-release. There's a way to add it. There's a way to choose a tag. Create a new tag on publish. Right. Choose it. Main. Publish release. Draft release. Put a tag version. Create your release. GitHub bottom and then generate. Make sure you have a valid tag. I want you to create one on public. Okay. One dot dot oh, dot. Oh, oh. Is that what I did? One dot dot oh, dot. Oh. Yeah. yeah it's great. Save save draft. Do I Let's see if that just drafting it does it. Publish. Great. And here it is. Here's the link. Copy link address. Well, this might be the same. Let's check. Looks the same. Archive. Yep. Tags. Oh no, it's under tags. Refs tags. Let me see. Does this actually work as is? Let's find out. Not found. Okay, what are you telling me? I no longer... What are you talking about? This is already paid for. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where'd it go? Here, copy. No, 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 no. Copy address. Okay. And then I need the SHA. How do I get the SHA? Here it is. Right? Oh no, go back. And you can get the SHA-256 by downloading and running SHA-256. Alright, that's not the commit SHA, but the actual file itself. So let's do that. CD downloads. Yes. SHA-256-A. Dash A. Oh, I already have that dash A and then just the name of the file. In the file is Compress, Firebase, Homebrew, Android, Homebrew. This guy. Cool. And then we got the shop set, right? Was it the full thing? Okay, cool. Okay. Writing your formula, replace the URL and shop with fields in your formula, the URL, da, 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 then commit and push. Okay. Updated URL and shop. To ensure your formula works as expected, use brew install build from source with new GitHub URL. Brew install. Oh, what the heck? Android. 88. For Android. Or it was like, hello. What was it? Hello. Homebrew. Hello. Android. Inform. Non checksum download of hello. And a formula file from arbitrary euros. Unsupported. Brooks. Do I have to publish again? That's kind of stupid. If I have to publish again. Can I re publish? <laughs> Do you think it will let me? No, because in the shot, it'll be different. This doesn't make any sense. I guess I can make another version, but then it, yeah, it's not gonna be. It's gonna be so weird. The new version is gonna be. Is that really gonna work? Non checksum to download of Hello Android formula file from an arbitrary URL it is unsupported. Brew should or brew create and brew tab new to create. Yeah. If also has been followed correctly, the brew should now be able to manage your Python script as a package. Your Python is now we're really ready to publish your tab. First, create a new tab. All right, let's try this. I still think I might need to create a new version, but if I create a new version, then I don't have the right SHA. It's so weird. Okay, let's try it. Brew tap dash new android 88 slash home brew dash hello. Okay, finally push it. Okay, then cd into the generated directory and place the formula. Did you generate a f something? Where did that create it? And see in the generated directory. Replace the formula template RB with CD formula. There is no. What are you talking about? That doesn't seem right. Brew tap new. That's what I did, right? Brew tap. Oh, but I put it here. I see. CD here. Yes. CD formula ls. There's nothing in there. Then CD into the generated directory and place the formula template RB with your hello. They then push the change. Something's not quite right. Great. Create GitHub workflows publish create Android hello Android hello Android tap initialize empty git it's like nothing in there though I guess it's a new git I have to like cd into that I guess open okay git commit or git add commit session initial import git push or main could not read for remote repository origin does not appear to be a git origin master Remoteless. Get status. Nothing to commit. Work tree. Get push. Get push remote. Get remote. And did that work? Something seems wrong there. AI being funky man. Does not quite add up. Sounds almost right and then it's not. 
Nothing else added, right? Three commits. Initial update your option. Right, Kendrick. Something went off the rails here. See, this doesn't make sense. What did what did this script do? There's a readme. That's it. Do I need the readme? This form has brew installed. Brew tap. I mean, that's that's not needed. That's like nothing. Mm. Now you're finally ready to publish your tab. First, create a new tab. Get tab new username repo. Then CD into the generated directory. Replace the formula dash template RP with your hello world RP. Finally, push the change. Push the changes if I'm in the other directory. It doesn't make any sense. How to publish a new? How to publish a new? Let's see. Android 88. Hello, Android. Okay. Replace username. Okay. Brew install my formula. Brew install. Hello, Android. Have your formula accessible to anyone as a tap. They can use it by tapping their GitHub browser and installing the formula. No available formula, formula with the name Hello, Android. Did you mean Hello, Android? Yeah. Yes, I did. Only found Hello, Android. No available formula with the name Hello, Android. Did you mean Hello, Android? In formula file. Brew formula hello android be expected to find class hello or android but only found what's the difference oh capital r hmm who said lowercase r who put lowercase r oh this guy's wrong where'd this come from brew android brew hello Android. Should probably fix that. That was for home page though that's not a big deal I get hello android why is the casing off class hello android print hello lowercase only found hello android nobody told you to look for hello lowercase android mm. tap tap android 88 so eight brother jane i'm trying to surprise so can you please use a greater no sorry don't do that android where is it sorry i forgot okay let's wrap it up hello. maybe i typed it wrong here it's all same casing why did this get checked in oh get ignored sure whatever okay untapped brew install brew install hello android no available form of the name hello android Searching for similar name formula and gas. Brew tab Android 88 slash homebrew. Hello or Android. Brew install. Hello or Android. Click to find class. Hello or Android. All right, it says the error message is the homebrew is expecting to find a class name. Hello or Android, but it only found hello or Android instead. The mismatch was likely due to naming convention that homebrew falls. Homebrew in the name of the class in the formula file should match exactly with the formula file name, but with first letter capitalized. Here's how to resolve this. Open the Hello World RB formula. Okay, uppercase. Thank you. Change the class name from Hello Randroid. Where do you see? Oh, there it is. Hello Randroid. Hello Randroid. Okay. Hello. Save the file and then make. Save the file. Then. You go this layer. Okay. Fix name. Name and home page. Oh, brew update. Brew update. Oops, brew update. Cool. Hey, looking good on the tar. Script didn't change, so even though no such file or directory. Hello, right? It might be the name of the file needs to be lowercase. It's that I don't actually know. Or I guess it's looking for this guy. Maybe it shouldn't have been underscored. Double check the URL in your formula where the package source code can be downloaded from. Ensure it points to the valid tarball or zip. Okay, let's look. Okay, that, that worked. Homebrew, hello, Android, formula. Okay. Review the files within the tarball zip file. You can do this by manually downloading the file done on zip. Make sure there is indeed a hello and hello Android file at the top level of the archive. There isn't. If you're missing it. my my top level file is hello Android. I knew that was weird. Why the f install hello Android equals hello Android. This will install Hello Rendered by into the proper homebrew directory and rename it to Hello Rendered for easier command line access. To make the script directly as you would remember to include Shebang Python 3 at the top of your Python script. Thank you for telling me that. With this line, the operating system would not know the file in Python script. After making these changes, you commit them and push them to update. Then user can install and upgrade your formula with the corresponding commands. It's still need to make another release, right? Fixed file name. Made scripts executable. 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 How's that not? Okay. Push. Brew update. Brew. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Creator code in Fortnite. Was ever talking about? 
haven't bought anything in a while, so. Brew install upgrade. Brew install, sorry. Hello, hello Android. Brew upgrade. Hello, Android. I don't know why I need to upgrade. And then if I say hello, Android, permission denied. This error typically means that your Hello Android script does not have execute permissions. There are a few ways to resolve this. Manually set script permissions with Gmod. This isn't ideal for use case as Brew should handle permissions exactly. Modify your Ruby format explicitly change script permissions during install. Have this line to your install block. Beautiful. Dash install. Let's see. Bin install. Hello. Five. 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 Hello Android. This sets the Read and execute permissions for all users and write permissions for owner. Save your changes, commit, and push the GitHub, then reinstall. Okay, here we go. Brew update. Brew, brew. install. Hello. Install. Hello, Android. This might already be the case, but especially when the script is written, it should be. Okay. Yeah, you already told me that. Brew install. Hello. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to. Oh, I'll just do it here first. Hello, Android. Permission denied. Brew update. Brew uninstall. Hello, Android. Okay. Hello, Android should do nothing. Great. Install. Hello, Android. Oh, it's probably downloading the, the file that is not executable. Okay, so we need to release another version. Let's go ahead and do that. Code releases. Mm -hmm. Publish your first pack. Draft a new release. There we go. Fix initial release. 1.0.1. .1. No, execute. Uh, this time a copy link address should be the same with a different version, but we'll see. This is going to give me a different shot, so let's go ahead and do that. This, but the cool. do the shot. Version 1.0.1 .1 release. Okay. Now we do a brew update. Brew uninstall. Hello, Android. Brew install. Hello, Android. Moment of truth. Hello, Android. It worked! Oh my god. Alright, well, that's two hours. That's a two hour coding stream. Yeah. All our goal hit. All right. Love it. We're going to increase that next time. Seriously, that's freaking awesome. Well, what do we do? Well, we did a lot of learning here. Um, I think it's super amazing, but this is going to open doors for us, right? Now that we have a framework here to tap things, we can run an actual Python script. We can make this something cool, like hint, hint, a open AI script for converting text to speech. That's right. So, We'll do that in the next stream, hopefully. But for now, we're gonna call it here. And if you want to run this yourself, just brew tap Android 88 slash homebrew dash hello Android and install and run hello Android. All right, thanks for watching guys. Three, two, happy new year, 2024, here we come. Twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. All right, I had some disconnects there, so I'm gonna give it a minute and then I will shut down the stream at exactly two hours. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the follows. See you next time. Oh, the two cameras.